Welcome to Exchange with John Zimmer. After peaceful childhood in South Canada, John turbocharged his life and career. Three years in a law school, 10 years in a law firm, 17 years in the UN family. In parallel, got married, moved to Geneva, raised two daughters, learned three more languages, survived for Scorpio bites, and became nine-time European champion in public speaking. Then surprised many to become an entrepreneur at the age of 53. Let's hit the brakes and find out what happened then. Welcome, John. My God, you had such a wonderful, comfortable, well-established life. Why changing? There is a quote by the American philosopher Henry David Thoreau, and he said, he said, I have many lives to live, and I've spent enough time on this one. And that's how I was feeling. I, I I'd enjoyed my time there, but I felt that there was other things to try. And I'd rather try and fail at something than not try and always wonder what might have been. We were scared. Oh, of course. Yeah, there's a, you know, people keep telling you, are you crazy? Are you crazy? Uh, it, of course, th there were some sleepless nights. There's nerves, there's anxiety. But on the other side, there's also excitement and there's, there's this energy and there's this curiosity. And it's funny, when I, when I talk to many of those people today, we're still in contact, good friends, many times they'll tell me, oh, you're so lucky. And it's interesting, it's an interesting observation, I think, on human psychology. You're either crazy or you're lucky. And without question, there was a bit of craziness, and certainly there was a lot of luck. But there's also other things. There's hard work, there's uncertainty, there's fear, there's motivation, there's all these things. It's like different slices of a pie. Okay. Now let's talk about your life as an entrepreneur. What lessons have you learned? Years ago, I was doing a, a mini workshop on effective communication. It was here in Geneva and my audience were, there were approximately 80 people from the communications departments of different organizations in companies here. So already it was stressful because I'm talking about a subject that these people are working with every single day. So I worked really hard to create something that I thought would be unique and that would be uh, have an impact and get them to uh, give them a different perspective. So the workshop starts and it's going very well. They're engaged and it's back and forth. And at one point to to demonstrate a certain a point that I was making, I showed an image. It was a picture of work. It, I was in the picture with uh, this group of little kids. It was when I was doing some work, uh, when I was at the International Organization for Migration, we went on this, this uh, business trip, a mission as they call it in UN speak, to Kenya. So it was a picture of me with a bunch of these kids from this, this one uh, internally displaced person's camp. And I showed this picture and there was a woman in the audience and she let out this very audible groan, this, oh, and I don't know, it was just her, but there was just something about it. At that moment, it was as if the entire room went dark and there was this spotlight just on her. And I kid you not, for about five, ten seconds, I was, uh, it, it really threw me. And then I, I, got myself back on track and it went fine and, and the rest of the workshop it, it was fine and, and people liked it a lot and it was good. But that incident really bothered me for about a week. I'd be I'd be working or I'd be thinking and then I would just like I would think, damn it, why did that happen? Why did that happen? And you know what I learned at the end by the end of the week, I, I said to myself, I said, you know, you know, smarten up. If you're going to be doing this, if you're going to be getting up on stage in front of people, you have to realize that not everybody is going to like everything you say. You can't please everybody. And that was, it was a real revelation. I, I think sometimes maybe I, I still have a tendency to want to please everybody, but I'm at least mindful of the fact that you can't please everybody. It's impossible. What I think it's important to do is to go into any speaking event, in my case, or whatever it is that people are doing, to go into any situation with the best intentions to help other people. You do your best work, you prepare, you go in with that intention, 
And at the end of the day, it's up to them to decide. Do they accept it? Do they not accept it? Do they accept part? Do they not accept the other part? One of the big regrets in my life is that I never took a gap year. I never took a year off. I went from high school to undergrad university, directly to law school, directly to work for this law firm in Canada. When I left and moved to across the world to Geneva, within three, four days of landing, I was working. When I left the UN, I, I, over, I had a weekend off and then I started working at the International Organization for Migration and then from there to the WHO. It was, there was never any time off. It was always just go, go, go to the next thing. And looking back, I wish that I had, for example, maybe after law school or before law school, taken a year off to travel, just to, to do things. And so when I became an independent, I was now in charge of my time. And, you know, most people, understandably, when they start their own business, it's, you know, marketing and website and client development and all these things. And I was doing some of that, but just as often, if there was nothing to do in a day, I might go out for a long bike ride or read or just go for a walk. And for me, those, for the first, I'd say the first year or two, it was really important for me to just kind of take a bit of time as well to, it was decompression after, after so many years of go, go, go. There's, there's real power in stillness and being quiet in trying to declutter our minds. I, I've been meditating every day for the last five, six years. It's something I wish I would have started 30 years ago. But just this, this ability to just stop and actually just focus on maybe your breath or just clear your mind, it's like a recharge for the mind. I think more clearly during the rest of the day, and it also allows me to be more present. I mean, I think everybody can relate to this at some point that you're, you're, you're walking down the street, but you're thinking about, oh, I've got this meeting I have to go to and I've got to prepare this. And you're not in the moment. Your, your mind is racing. And I find when I can slow down the thinking, I perform more effectively when I'm working with clients or doing other work-related matters. I'm more present. Nobody gets through this life alone. We, I think a lot of people would like to be, I think that they're independent, and I think independence in a certain amount is an important thing. It's a good thing. But we, nobody knows everything, and you need help. And, for example, in social media and marketing, for the longest time I was thought, okay, I can do this by just blogging and sending things out. But no, I mean, there, there are all kinds of tricks and secrets to effective marketing to get the message out, everything from lead magnets to funnels to all these concepts that I'm still struggling with to, these, to this day. And it was when I started to reach out to people with expertise in social media, to reach out to uh, a, a company, a person I know in Hungary that I'd met before that I like uh, to help design a website. To the ability to say, I can't do this part of it. I need you to do this for me. It was an important realization, and it's also cathartic. It's this letting go. And when you think about it, why spend so much time doing something inefficiently when you can actually have somebody else do it? This, you know, this trade-off between cost and time, cost and time, Time is way more valuable. You can always make more money somehow, but you can never get back more time. And that's something that I've come to learn. My last question. What advice can you give to someone who is just starting on business? I tell them two things, which are two sides of the same coin. Number one, be sure and take time out for yourself to relax, to exercise, to eat right, to be in the best shape you can be physically and emotionally because you're going to need that energy to carry you through. But the other side of the coin is, so we've talked about taking time for yourself, the other side of the coin is 
you can't do it by yourself. Seek out people, surround yourself with people who are knowledgeable in your area, who will give you constructive feedback, and who will support you in what you're doing. That's the best advice I can think of. Great stories. Thank you, John. Stay tuned for more interviews on Exchange.